Welcome everybody to our 75 Hatha Yoga practice tonight. We'll get started in just a minute. So if you have some props that you'd like to use, such as blocks or a chip foam pad or maybe a strap or any kind of household items that might take the place of those, feel free to gather them up and get yourself settled onto your mat. Choose one of these beautiful intention cards from the Living Peace deck. I really like these cards. They give simple words that you can meditate on throughout your practice and bring in just a little extra level of depth if you like. And tonight, being that this is a Hatha practice, I won't necessarily be teaching vinyasas, but if you like to take them, maybe from Downward Dog or anytime you feel like you need to move some energy, feel free to take those and modify any postures that you would like to modify or even add on if you know other variations. Please stay focused on your breath. Use this opportunity to let go, to move energy through the body and hopefully lead you into a relaxing evening. Let's see here. Oh, that's a beautiful word. The word tonight is trust. So just a, an extra layer maybe if you're practicing with intentions, I always encourage people to do that. It says that when you rely on your own integrity, when you have surety in yourself, then you have the power to assure others and provide a cornerstone of confidence. And I find myself often these days um, giving a lot of support to other people or, or asking for support. And knowing that when I feel confident in the way that I'm providing support, that I, I, I can really trust that, that I'm giving my whole self and being honest and um, offering integrity, that that's what I gain in return. So we can support one another from a really strong foundation when we trust ourselves to reach out there and support one another. And also in your practice, trust your intuition, trust that inner voice that telling you maybe to to tone down the practice or maybe to level it up, whatever is right for your body. It's definitely not a competition. And most of us are practicing alone in our own homes right now. So you only have yourself to impress. So impress upon yourself the importance of your own self-trust, your own self-judgment and making sure that you're doing what's right for your body tonight. Put this card up here. All right, we'll start tonight lying down on our back, Sukta Baddha Konasana, Supine Butterfly position. I'll turn a little bit to the side. You can have the soles of your feet together, knees out wide as you lay down onto your back. And feel free to use blocks if you have them underneath your outer thighs. Allow your spine to lengthen, maybe tilt the tailbone under just a little bit, chin slightly in toward the chest. And your arms can be in many different variations. Sometimes it's nice to let the arms come out wide, palms facing up. Maybe you like the sensation of your own touch, placing one hand on your heart, one hand on your abdomen. Sometimes it's nice to cactus the arms. This pushes the chest up just a little bit, getting a little bit more of a heart opener. Or maybe even grabbing your opposite elbows with your palms over your head. So this creates a nice long side body. So you set yourself up in any of these variations and just start to settle in. Use this restorative posture to check in with yourself, to land here, to begin your practice. Over the first five to six breaths, let the breath, breath be natural, no effort, natural, even easy breathing. But then start to bring more awareness to it. Can you start to lengthen and deepen the breath and notice maybe any places where you might be holding more tension and try to direct the breath there. Sometimes I even will put a hand wherever I might be feeling a little tightness or tension and that will bring the energy of the breath to that place. If you feel comfortable you can close your eyes or just a soft gaze at one point. And allow into your mind's eye to trust the evolution of an intention for your practice. What is it that you would like to bring in 
to your movement and your breath this evening to create a more meaningful practice. As well, maybe set a collective intention, something for the greater good that you can send your energy towards. And finally, let's find a dedication for our practice or something that you would like to direct this energy to. Maybe a person, maybe a cause, maybe a place. A lot of need in the world right now for our positive healing energy. And let's take three deep breaths together, exhaling with a sigh. Exhale all the air out of your mouth first to begin. Inhale into your belly. Up to your chest, up to your shoulders, full breath. Silently mouth, exhale to let go. Be present with the breath. Inhale into your belly. Up to your chest, up to your shoulders, full breath in, pause at the top. Release and let go as you sigh, exhale. And one more like that, inhale, fully, deeply, completely, pause at the top. Let go and release, sigh. And now bring your hands together, stacked on top of your heart. We'll open our practice together with one beautiful sound of OM. And let this OM be like a cradle for you. You can feel the vibration through your back body into the earth, all around your body. Allow yourself to sink down into it as you attune yourself to this vibration of peace and harmony. Feel free to send this vibration out into the world, somewhere that you would like it to land somewhere that needs more peace and harmony right now. Deep clearing breath in through your nose. Sigh out your mouth. Or on inhale. Oh. Remove your blocks if you have them. Use your hands on your outer thighs to guide your knees toward each other and then in towards your chest, up and up, and then knees to chest. Rock side to side across the sacrum. And then release your left foot to the floor. Keep your right knee towards your chest. You can interlace your palms or have one palm higher up, the other palm lower. Hug your knee out and around your rib cage and in toward your right shoulder. You can keep the left leg where it is or start to extend the heel forward, toes pointing toward you, pressing the back of your left thigh down. Shoulders pressing down into the mat, chin in slightly toward the chest. How about a knee cross and a wind removing? Give your knee a nice big squeeze, stimulating the ascending colon, so important for our digestion and absorption of nutrients. All of the food that we put into our body. Better relax the shoulders. Inhale again, shoulder out and around the rib cage. Exhale, squeeze it back in. Keep that left leg active, even your right toes active. On your next inhale, slide your left heel toward your bum until your foot is flat on the mat. Cross your flexed right ankle over your left thigh and we'll hug the left knee in toward the chest and maybe a little out toward the left. You can hug behind the thigh or in front of the shin bones. And as you guide your left knee in toward the shoulder, actively move your right knee away from you using the outer right thigh. The Supta Kapotasana, supine pigeon. Feel that opening into the right hip as you pull your left knee more to the left. Right knee pushing more away from the right shoulder. Deep inhale. Squeeze in a little tighter on your exhale. 
two more breaths. Stay connected to that long, deep, equanimous breath. Maybe for every inhale, you come back to your intentions, your dedication. As you exhale, releasing to open up the space. Allow those intentions to come into your reality. And slowly release the left foot down to the mat. Cactus your right arm out to the right. Press your foot into the mat to jog your hips a little bit to the right. And then lower your right foot all the way over to the left side. So keep this figure four shape with your legs. Your right knee is pointing up to the ceiling and you can hold your right ankle with your left hand and actively push your right knee away. This will give you a really nice stretch for the outer right hip. If you want one extra twist, you can turn and look towards your right shoulder or your right hand. Keep pressing that right knee forward and away. Breathe here, inhale and exhale. Two more, inhale, exhale. Feel free to sigh anytime. It feels so good to release. One more, inhale, and exhale. You bring your gaze back to center. Press your hands down into the mat beside you to support yourself, to lift yourself up, press into your foot. Align your hips back in the center, half happy baby. Take your right hand to the outer right, Foot. Press your right knee down to the mat. You can keep your left foot on the floor with your knee bent or extend that leg. Maybe even let it hover if it doesn't straighten and come all the way down. Might feel good to stay here or even open that right leg more. Get more into the inner thighs. It's going out at a bit of an angle here. And deep breath in. Keep that left leg active if it's straight. Deep breath out. Inhale, let's bring the knees back into the chest. Give yourself a nice squeeze. And then keep your left knee in toward your chest. Extend your right leg straight. And feel free to keep that right knee bent if it's better for you. Pelvis is tossed on the other side. This side stimulating the descending colon. So this is about elimination of waste and toxins from the body. Pull that left knee out to the left around the rib cage if you can, and then back in toward the shoulder, keeping the back of your right thigh active if your leg is straight. Press out through both heels. Toes are curling toward you, so active feet here, whichever variation you're in. Give yourself a few more deep breaths, long, deep inhales and exhales. Start to slide your right foot back onto the mat. Knee is pointing up. Guide your flexed left ankle over top of your right thigh. And then start to hug the right knee in toward your right shoulder, grabbing behind the thigh or in front of the shin bone. Hands can be interlaced. Try to take the right knee a little bit more to the right and then maybe toward the outer right shoulder. Left knee is pushing away actively using the outer left thigh. Foot is flexed. Protect your knee. Take your cup of passana to pine pigeon. Few deep breaths here. Open up that left hip. I find the more I take my right knee to the right and pull my left knee away and forward, away from me, get a deeper opening into that left hip. One more deep inhale here. Open up your left arm to the left in a cactus shape. Tap your right foot down. Jog your hips a little bit to the left side and pull that right uh, left foot down to the right. Hold on to your ankle if you can, maybe some more in your shin, and actively push your left knee away. This will get a nice opening into the outer left hip. And finally, you can turn your gaze away from your knee. Take five deep breaths here. And then a little bit of a tug right into the, maybe the outer left hip, the base of the hip flexor here. It can be quite tight. Sometimes it feels good 
massage in and I didn't say that on the other side but we do it on this side Bring your gaze back to center. Place your arms down beside you. Tone your abdominals. Bring your knees back up into your pointing up toward the ceiling. Half happy baby. Wrap your left hand around your outer left foot. Keep your right knee bent or start to extend that right leg straight. Left knee working toward the mat as you press your heel up. Feet are active here. Maybe you float that right leg just to keep it straight. See how that feels? Kind of a nice stretch to the top of the thigh. You can stay here or maybe extend that left leg out and feel this op the opening of this shape. Looks a lot like a shape we'll take later on in this class. Take a deep breath in. And a long breath out. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Guide your left heel back towards your groin. Bring your right knee out. And then we'll come into total happy baby, Ananda Balasana. Both knees coming to the outer rib cage. Feet pressing up. Flex your feet. Press up to the ceiling. And at the same time, press your hands down into your feet and use this little bit of leverage to roll the sacrum down toward the mat. You're welcome to stay right here. We'll start to rock side to side. Bringing one knee all the way down, other knee all the way down. And then maybe add in that extension of the leg. So as your right knee comes down, straighten your left arm and your left leg. Press straight up to the ceiling. Same thing, other side. Left knee comes down, right foot straight up, right hand pressing down. A couple more times each side. Or maybe you can open it up so the legs are wide. Finish off your side. Bring your feet together to touch. Make a little basket around the base of your feet, the outer end of your feet. As you pull your heels down toward the groin and the heels in toward your center line, press your knees away. Roll the sacrum down, a floating Supta Baddha Konasana here. Breathe in. Breathe out. Nice, slow opening to the class today. And you might have noticed I'm not playing music now for my classes, but you're welcome to follow me on Spotify. I have lots of playlists there. You can choose any one that you like. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Close it in. Squeeze nice and tight. Make yourself a nice, tight little cannonball. Maybe bring your forehead to your shin. Release your head down and you have a choice here. We'll make our way up to our seat. You can roll forward and back a few times or roll side to side. Make your way all the way up and we'll come into a tabletop position. So I'll just turn around. Cross over your ankles if you're rolling forward and back. Come onto your hands and step your left leg or right leg back behind you one at a time to walk it out just to get a little extra release of the leg. Then we'll make our way into tabletop position. We'll come into a twist here. From On your inhale breath, take your right leg out to the right and press the outer edge of your right foot down. Pull your outer right hip back, left hand just slightly forward of your left shoulder. You can right underneath is fine. Inhale your right arm up to the sky, big open stretch. As you exhale, bend your left elbow to hover that right shoulder down to the mat. Not all the way down, just hover. Look to the left. Inhale, come all the way back up. Open your chest, look up. Exhale, hover that right arm. Bend your left elbow, come all the way, almost to the mat. One more time. Inhale, open it up, big stretch, reach up. Exhale, this time as we thread the left, uh, right arm under the left, bend your elbow enough that you can get your right shoulder all the way down to the mat. And if you can't get there, use a cushion or a block to support yourself. Maybe resting the shoulder on the block or the cheek on the block. Look up toward the left side. We press the 
back of your right hand down into the mat. See if you can go a little bit deeper. Deep breath in. And a long breath out. Maybe you want to extend your left arm forward. Two more deep breaths. Keep pulling your outer right hip back. Slide your left palm back underneath your shoulders. Sweep your right arm up. Reach all the way up to the sky. Exhale. Bring both hands down to the mat. Keep your left toes tucked and sweep your right leg back behind you. Tone your abdominals. Roll your outer right hip down. Press out through your heel. On your inhale breath, extend through your left arm. Exhale. Elbow to knee. Bring it in. A little dancing cat here. Inhale to extend. Reach open. Exhale. Bring it in. Two more. Inhale to extend. Exhale, bring it in. Last one. Inhale to extend. Exhale, bring it in. Press into your right palm. Inhale back to extension. Stay. You can always tap one of your limbs down or bend your back knee. Keep your foot active. Reach back and grab the inside of your right foot with your left hand. And kick your foot into your palm. Kick it up and back as you roll your outer right hip down. Maybe you gaze down at the mat, maybe you gaze forward, or maybe up. Hold here for three deep breaths. And then we'll release slowly, extend, come back to tabletop, a few cat and cows, inhale, tailbone up, tummy down, chest up, toes are tucked. As you exhale, untuck the toes, round your spine, pull your hips back until your fingertips tense. Again, come forward, toes are tucked, tailbone up, tummy down, chest up. Untuck the toes, round your spine, hips toward your heels, tense your fingertips. And come back up through center. And this time, step your left foot out to the left. Keep the toes tucked, weight into your right hand. Inhale your left arm up to the sky, big open stretch. Exhale, slide that left arm under. You might use a block or just a hover. Inhale, you have to bend that right elbow as you come down. Exhale, sweep it up through. A block can give you a little bit of feedback if you need. Inhale, open it up. And this time we'll come all the way down and hold. So block under the shoulder or under your cheek. Press the back of your left hand down. Outer left hip pulling back. You're welcome to stay here or extend your right palm forward for a few breaths. Last round of breath. You slide your right palm back into place. Sweep your left arm up to the sky. Big breath in. Exhale, both hands come to the mat. The right toes are tucked. Spread your fingertips. As you inhale, left leg sweeps behind you. Draw the belly in. Roll your outer left hip down. Keep that foot active as you inhale, right arm forward. Take an inhale breath to extend. Draw the belly in. Exhale, round the spine. Bring it in. Beautiful. Inhale, extend. Gaze comes forward. Exhale, bring it in. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And last one. Inhale. Exhale. Feel free to tap your limbs down if you need or come back into the extension. Stay here or bend your left knee. Reach back. Find the inside arch of your left foot. You can always grab a pant leg or use a strap. Outer left hip rolling down. Press into your hand. You can gaze down, forward or up for three breaths. Beautiful, we'll release. This time we'll take child pose. So take your knees wide, big toes touch, hips to heels, forehead down, arms extended. And if you like, tend your fingertips, lift your arm bones up.
a variation of Anahatasana Heart Mountain Pose. You're welcome to stay right here. We're going to lift your hips up with your toes tucked and walk your hands more forward until your hips are right over top of your knees and your forehead is down. Maybe take your chin forward, lengthen the neck. Three more deep breaths. <laughs> Give the dog. Melting back to child pose, let your arms release, forehead down. Stay in child pose. We'll take one Brahmari breath so that exhalation will be a humming sound with the lips closed. Very releasing breath. So prepare to let go of anything that you like. Make it as loud and as long as you can. Deep clearing breath in through your nose. Mm. to your hands, pull yourself back up to your tabletop, walk your hands slightly forward. And finally, I'm sure you've been waiting for it, the first downward facing dog. Lift your hips back and up, pedal up your heels a few times, walk it out side to side. Let your head hang heavy, maybe nod side to side or forward and back. And then find yourself in stillness for five deep breaths. Root your finger pads down. Try to hug the inner arms toward each other. So elbows facing one another, inner elbows. Head is down, looking between the inner thighs and hips. Pull back and up. Deep inhale. Long exhale. Few more inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale. And exhale. And you're always welcome to take a child pose if you need at any time. Lift your right leg up to the sky. Start to open up your hips. Stack the hips and then bend your knee. Drop your foot to the left side. Square your right shoulder down. See if you can look underneath your left arm for your toes. Keep lifting that knee higher. Squeeze your right glute. Maybe come high onto the left toes. Keep lifting that knee. One more deep inhale. Stay for your exhale. On your inhale breath, bring your knee all the way forward into your chest. Look forward and step your right foot inside of your right thumb. Back heel spins down. Virabhadrasana one. Couple of breaths here. Find your strong foundation. Outer right hip back. Left thigh forward. Use your feet as an anchor here to help orient your hips toward the top of your mat. Arms are extended up. Maybe your gaze is up. Maybe palms come together to touch. Bend that right knee just a little bit more. Deep breath in, long breath out. And now we'll open up our stance to warrior two. So pivot your back heel a little bit more to the center. So your heels align, front heel to back arch alignment. Open up your arms so your right fingertips are forward, left back, deepen into your right knee, Virabhadrasana two. Your outer right hip is hugging under, your inner left thigh rolling open. And at the same time, it almost feels like you're Inner thighs are squeezing toward each other as you bend deeply into that right knee. Try to extend your arms as far away from you as, po as from each other as possible, away from your center, as if your arms were direct extensions of your heart. You want to extend that love in both directions. Really trust yourself here. Trust yourself to go deeper. Hold the pose. Find your breath. Let's flip that right palm up, lower your left hand down, exalted warrior. Keep bending that left knee as you reach the top arm up and back. Maybe stay here or bend your elbow. Hold your head in your hand and turn your heart open. If you have a bind practice, you can go there. Keep letting that right knee bend, track it outward toward the baby toe. And 
bow to warrior two. Inhale. As you exhale, right forearm to right thigh. Reach your top arm over your head. Deep breath in. And a long breath out. Stay here. Or maybe reach your right fingertips to a block or the mat. Utika Parsval Kandasana. If you have a bind practice, go for it. Spin your pinky finger down, thumb up. If you're keeping your arm extended. Outer right hip pulling back. Inner left thigh rolling open. Use those feet as a strong anchor. Let's come all the way back up, warrior two. Windmill your hands down to the mat, step back to downward dog. And if you like a vinyasa in your practice, you can go for it. I'll show you one here. Or stay in downward dog or child pose. Inhale, ripple forward, high plank. Lower to the belly. Take a back bend, it can be cobra, upward dog. Come back onto the belly, tuck your toes, push up and back. Downward dog. Deep breath in. And a long breath out. And now walk your hands to the back of your mat before we do the other side. Soften your knees. Pick up your feet and slide your palms underneath your feet. Padahastasana. If this isn't accessible for you, you can use blocks beside your feet and put the back of your hands down on any height. Bend your knees as much as needed. Lengthen your chest forward. Halfway lift. As you exhale, pull yourself in towards your thigh. Try to straighten the back of your legs. Let your forehead come towards your shins. Release your grip. Walk your hands all the way back, downward dog. Take a deep inhale and a long exhale. And left leg lifts to the sky. So to stack your hip, left over right, then bend your knee, drop your foot to the right side. Try to square your left shoulder down. Maybe look underneath your right arm for your leg. Maybe lift your right heel high. See if you can squeeze your left glute, lift your knee a little higher. Stay with your breath. And bring your knee in toward your chest. Look forward. Step your left foot inside of your left thumb. Back heel spins down to find that foundation to rise up. Your Bhadrasana one, warrior one. Outer left hip pulling back. Right thigh forward and down. Bend your left knee as generously as you can using your outer right foot as an anchor. Arms are extended. Maybe you're looking forward, maybe your palms touch and you look up. And trust yourself to hold a strong foundation. And always listening to your body, so trust your intuition as well if you need to lighten the load here, or maybe you want to go deeper. Last breath. And we'll open up our back heel, so slide it further back. Front heel to back, arch alignment, arms extend, Vyobhadrasana 2. Left fingertips forward, left knee is tracking toward the baby toe, so take a look for your left big toe. Right arm reaching back, deepen into that front knee. So at the same time, it feels like inner thighs are hugging toward each other, spread the feet apart. So your outer right thigh is tucking under, in, outer left thigh tucking under, inner right thigh rolling open. Deep inhale. And a long exhale, two more breaths here. Strong drishti, gaze down your front fingertips. And the left palm flips up, right hand down, inhale, reach up and back. Viparita Vyogadras, an exalted warrior. Find your variation, maybe you find your head with your hand, turn your chest open. Maybe you go for a bind, keep bending that left knee, lift your heart to the sky. Send out those intentions up into this universal pool of energy. Last round of breath. And come back to your center, warrior two. 
Carve Lokanasana, side angle pose, left forearm to thigh, right arm reaching up, stay here. You can lower your left fingertips down if you like, or to a block. Uttita Parsva Konasana, extended side angle. Pull your outer left hip back, roll your inner right thigh open. Gaze underneath your right arm if you can, if it's extended, maybe stay or go for a bind. For spinning your pinky finger down, thumb up, get that internal shoulder rotation. Stay present to your breath. And look down, unwind yourself, come all the way back up, warrior two. On your inhale breath, hands windmill down to the mat, back heel lifts, step back, downward dog. Feel free to stay here, tabletop, child pose or vinyasa. We'll meet back here in three breaths. On your next inhale, walk your hands to the back of your mat. With your feet hip distance apart, bend your knees a lot. Wrap your peace fingers on the inside of your big toes. Tap them off with your thumb. On your inhale breath, lengthen your legs and arms as much as you can. Look forward and flat back. Exhale, fold and bow in towards your thigh. Keep pulling up on your toes as you press down into your feet. Lengthen your chest forward and that deep breath in. Bow to fold, exhale. Hold here, three deep breaths. Last breath. Lengthen, release your hands, half a lift. Exhale to fold. Walk your hands back again, downward facing dog. A deep inhale and a long exhale. To inhale, combine your toes as you pull forward, high plank pose. We'll stay here for a few breaths. You're welcome to lower your knees. Press down into your palms, see if you can rock more forward on the toes. Draw the belly in and press the hips down at the same time. Dome up the space between your shoulder blades. Strong, focus abdominals, working hard here. Support your posture and grip the mat with your fingertips. Finger pads, deep breath in and a long breath out. Inhale and exhale. Take one more inhale, ripple forward more. Exhale, slowly lower down onto the belly. Untuck your toes, lengthen your legs behind you. Take your fingertips out wide off of your mat. I've been calling these cupcake hands. So don't squish the icing on those cupcakes. Lift the center of your palm high. Palms in line with your chest, elbows tip forward, right in line with your shoulders. Try to squeeze your legs together. Viparita Bhujangasana, exalted cobra. Inhale like a wave, lift your chest. Exhale like a wave, lower down. Again, inhale like a wave, lift your chest. Exhale like a wave, lower down. This time add a twist. Inhale like a wave, lift up. Exhale, right shoulder down, look over the left elbow. Again, inhale, unwind that wave. Inhale up. Exhale, left shoulder down, look over the right. Back to center. Inhale, lift all the way up. Exhale. Inhale, all the way down. Slide your palms beside your chest. Tuck your toes, engage your legs. Use your knees up if you like. Push all the way back, high plank position. Downward facing dog. And feel free to take a vinyasa or stay. If you'd like to stay, you can come into a twist. Walk your feet a little bit closer to your hands. Deweight your left hand. Reach underneath your body for your right ankle, calf, or thigh, or maybe right up underneath your heel. Look underneath your right arm. Bend your knees as much as you need. Deep breath in. Long breath out. If you took a vinyasa, you're welcome to join us. Release your left hand forward. Keep your knees soft if you need. 
Right arm comes underneath, maybe for the ankle cuff or thigh, or maybe you can grab the left heel with your right hand. Look underneath your left arm, give yourself a nice twist. Back to downward dog, walk your hands forward. Step your big toes together to touch. Inhale, ripple forward, high plank pose. Bring your right hand forward, roll to the outer edge of your right foot. You're welcome to step your top foot in front if you need. Reach your top arm up to the sky, Vashisthasana. Stay here or reach your top arm all the way over your head. Push into your right hand and bow the hips. So lift your hips and then create that rainbow shape from your right fingertips all the way to the back toes. Deep breath in, long breath out. One more, inhale, exhale. Bring your hands back down to the mat, step back to plank pose, leg to the other side, big toes touch. A left hand forward, roll to the outer blade of your left foot. Feet can stay stacked or top foot in front. Vashisthasana, reach your top arm up, push your hips up so you're making a beautiful bow shape. The right side of your body, big breath in, and a big breath out. Look underneath your right arm again, deep breath in, and a deep breath out. Beautiful, come back to the high plank position. We can separate, inhale, exhale, lower all the way down onto your belly. Here we'll take a couple back bends. We'll start with half Dhanurasana. So bend your right knee, you can look behind for your right foot. You can keep your left forearm on the mat, reach back and grab the inside arch of your right foot and pull your chest forward. And if you can't reach, you can wrap a strap if you have one or grab your pant leg. Pull your chest back, maybe even extend your left fingertips forward until your arm is straight, lifting up. Keep kicking up and back. You're welcome to stay here or float your left arm and maybe float your left leg just the pelvis down. Deep breath in, lift up higher, deep breath out. One more, kick up, reach up, exhale, lower. Make a little pillow with your hands, forehead down. Few deep breaths here. Feel free to bend your knees and windshield wiper your legs side to side. Then release back onto the belly, legs are straight. Lift your chest up, bend your left knee, right forearm can remain on the mat. Use a strap if you need, reach back behind you with your left hand. Take your foot into your palm, stay here and feel that nice back bend or maybe press your right hand more forward till your arm is off the mat. Maybe lift your left knee up by kicking your foot hard. Maybe right arm and right leg float. Hold here. Lift up higher, breathe in, exhale, lower. Again, pillow with the hands, forehead can go straight down, windshield wiper your feet side to side. You can take a little rest. We'll go for full Dhanurasana. If that is not accessible for you today, just do the same thing side to side again. So try bending both knees. You're welcome to try to grab a strap if you like on, and do it half each side or both sides if that works for you. Reach back and grab either the tops of your feet, maybe at your toes, closer to your ankle, right at the ankle, or maybe right onto the shin if you have the space. Pull your shoulders back away from the mat, squeeze the shoulder blades together and as you start to kick your feet up and back either point your toes or flex your feet and try to roll onto the soft part of your belly squeeze the inner thighs together chest is lifting <laughs> little dog commotion behind me here deep breath in and a long breath out one more maybe look up breathe in and out beautiful release forehead down Rest the tops of your thighs. Deep breath in. And a long breath out. Okay. Okay.
Sorry for that. Uh oh. Having issues here. Come on. <laughs> Forehead all the way down. Let's bring our arms under our shoulders. Take your knees wide. Big toes touch, hips to heels. Sorry, a little dog barking here. Can't always be perfect. I'm hoping someone's going to come help me with the dog. Forehead down. Deep inhale. Long exhale. Let's push yourself all the way back up. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Sigh out your mouth. And now look forward to the top of your mat. Walk, step or hop forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale to rise all the way up. Reach up to the sky. Urdhva Hastasana, palms touch. Look up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Samastitihi. Oh, good. Somebody's coming to rescue me from the dogs. Come to standing somewhere near the top edge of your mat. You can be more in the middle if you like. Hands to your hip. Coming into some balancing. So putting a few poses together here. Bend your right knee. Reach back for the inside of your right ankle. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Reach your left arm up to the sky. So just as we did just now lying on our bellies, here we go into dancer's pose, Natra Jasana. Reach up with your left fingertips. Roll your right shoulder back and start to kick your foot into your hand. Outer right hip rolling down, left fingertips reaching forward, kick and kick, extending that top foot back and away from you. Look forward, reach forward, reach back, hold here, trust yourself. Go three, two, and one. Beautiful work, release. Give that a little shake. Go into the other side, Natra Jasana, hands to your hips. Bend your left knee. So this is like a half Dhanurasana pose right here. Right arm reaching up. And you're always welcome to stay here. You can use a strap as well. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Take an inhale breath. Start to kick up and back as you reach forward and up rather than hinging forward right away. Keep that extension. Keep the heart lifting. Keep reaching. Keep kicking. And trust yourself to find your balance here. Hold here, find your edge for three, two, and one. Beautiful work. Roll your shoulders, give your legs a little shake. Now we'll come into one more balance here with a twist. Hands to your hips, lift your right knee up. Padangustasana, if you can, big toe lock or holding on to the knee. So whichever you choose, stand up nice and tall. We've had a similar shape to this before. It's like Pavana Muttasana here. Or maybe start to extend the legs straight. Maybe your left arm reaches up. Stay here or open it up like we did from Half Happy Baby. And then extending that leg to find this beautiful opening. Hug your outer right thigh underneath you. Stand up taller. And finally, maybe look and twist your head to the left. Deep breath in. And a long breath out, trust yourself, believe you can do this, come back through center, whichever variation, left hand on your outer right knee, right hand to your right hip, stay right here, keep your right foot active, turn and twist. If you like, slide your left hand to the outer right foot, press your foot forward, reach your right arm back, outer right hip hugging underneath you, maybe look back, hold for three, two, and one, beautiful work. Coming all the way back. Might need a little roll out or a shake. Last side, left side. Stand up nice and tall, knee comes to the chest. Hold on to your thigh if you like. It's like Pavana Muktasana. Oh, here we go, hugging that, the toes in like Parangustasana. Extend the leg to any degree. Right arm reaches up. Believe in yourself as you open it up. Outer left thigh hugging under. 
Try to keep your hips level, stand tall, be confident. Maybe turn and twist to the right with your gaze. Hold here. Find the steady breath. Bring your gaze back through center, leg back through center, bend the knee. Right hand to your left knee, left hand to your left hip. Start to turn, twist, stay, or reach for the outer edge. Parvrita Uttita Hasta Padandusasana revolve. Hand to big toe pose. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Come back to center. And release all the way down. So good. Beautiful work. I wish I could see you all doing this practice. Maybe you can send me some videos of you practicing so I get to see you as well. And some people do actually, which I love, or pictures of themselves. Hands to your heart. Inhale, lift your chest. Feet are wide. Toes out. Heels in. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, sit down. Malasana squat pose. You're welcome to come right down onto your bum, soles of feet together, knees out wide for a butterfly, seated butterfly. Whichever position you're in, take your right hand out to the right, tend your fingertips, nudge your left inner knee with your left elbow, or reach your left arm up. Spin that palm around to your lower back, find a half bind, maybe to the inner right thigh or three quarter bind. Right fingertips reach back, or maybe they connect for a full bind. Maybe you can even wrap your left wrist with your right fingers. Roll your top shoulder open and try widening your knees. Deep breath in, deep breath out. One more, inhale, exhale. Let's release that, this is back through center for a breath. And then left fingertips come out to the left. Nudge your right inner knee with your right elbow, stay or progress further into the twist. Maybe the palm comes around to the lower back. Maybe you find that half bind, a three quarter bind, or maybe all the way. Maybe wrapping your fingertips around each other or your left hand around your right wrist. Turn and look open. Deep breath in. And a long breath out. Bring yourself back through center, elbows to the inner thighs, palms together, heel of the hands down as your chest lifts. Try to sink your hips as low as you can and lift your heart. Feel free to stay right here. This is perfect. You can even come down onto your seat for a seated butterfly. If crow pose is something that you like to throw into your practice, I know a lot of people do. I'll stay with you for that. Spread your fingertips wide in front of your shoulders. Lift your hips up and step your toes together to touch. You can even step onto a block. Keep your hands further forward than your shoulders so you have some space to bend your elbows back so that elbows are just tucked right underneath your knees. The knees are maybe above the triceps. So walk forward. Dome the upper back. So you really want that hollow out of the belly as you look forward. Maybe float one or both feet off the mat. Try to hug your inner elbows in. Round that upper spine, look forward, lean forward, hold here. If you can, if you want to shoot back for a vinyasa, you can. Or just lower all the way back down. And if you go for the vinyasa, then hop your feet back to Malasana. Take one more deep inhale here. And a long exhale. And then we'll slowly lower onto our seat. You can use your hands if you need for support. Lean back into your hands and extend your legs out lovingly. Be a little bit sore. Walk them out side to side. And we'll come into a, some seated forward fold. So we'll start with Paschimottanasana with our legs straight. If you like, sit up onto a block and move the flesh around your seat out to the side. So come right onto your center sitting bone. Fingertips are out to the side, spine is long. Take an inhale breath, reach up to the sky. Let's do a little wave here. Wave the spine forward as you exhale. You can soften your knees. Inhale, wave all the way back up. Open the heart. Exhale, soften forward. 
One more breath. Inhale, wave all the way up. Keep being good. This time, exhale, soften and fold. Grab on anywhere that you can. Knees can be bent. Try to keep your feet active. But even if your knees are bent, still press out through your heels. Curl your toes towards you. Let your head drop wherever it can. Take five more deep breaths. Last deep inhale, long exhale. And slowly start to roll yourself all the way up. And you can turn yourself to the long edge of your mat if you like. I prefer to do that for a wide-legged forward fold, Upavishta Konasana. One hand in front, other hand behind. Widen your heels as much as you can and try to draw your pelvis more forward. At the same time, sit up nice and tall. You might need your hands behind you to help lift the chest, especially if you're rounding a lot in the back. You can stay here or push your fingertips away from you to lean your chest more forward. Maybe you stay, maybe hands come in front. Try to keep a long spine. And when you can't go any further, pop yourself up maybe onto your fingertips, maybe onto blocks of your elbows. If you're going further, maybe you can press your hands into your inner ankles and widen your arms straight away from each other chest coming down, chin coming down, belly down. Maybe turn your gaze to one side for a few breaths and then the other. You switch your gaze. Bring the palms under your chest, lift yourself up. Bring your right forearm either on top of your right leg or inside. Left hand to your left hip. So here's that same kind of twisting action again. And then reaching your top arm over your ear. Your left arm reaching towards your right toe. Try to roll your top shoulder open more. Maybe spin your pinky finger down, thumb up. If you can go for a bind of the foot, that's fine. But try not to squish yourself into the shape. Create space between your neck and your shoulders. Try to root your left sitting bones down. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. One more inhale. And exhale. Lift yourself up enough to plant your fingertips on either side of your right leg. Pull your chest toward the right as you inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold over your right thigh. Lifting yourself back up to the center. Let's walk to the other side. Left forearm onto your left leg or inside. Right hand to right hip. Keep those legs active. Try to root the right sitting bone down. It's hard. It, stop, it does start to lift up a little bit. Turn your chest open. Reach your right arm up and over your ear. Get that same rotation. Pinky finger down, thumb up. Look underneath your arm. Active feet here. Maybe go for the bind of the foot. But create space for your neck and your shoulders. Lift yourself up enough to turn toward your left leg. Keep your right foot active. Both sitting bones down. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale to fold. Slowly come back up through center and gather in your inner thighs and your knees gently. If you're turned to the side, 
Turn toward the front of your mat. Bring your feet to the top of your mat. We'll come down slowly here. Feel free to have your blocks handy. You might need them. As we lower down, inhale, lift your chest. Strong abdominals, slowly start to lower all the way down onto your back. Give yourself a little hug as you bring your knees in towards your chest. And Apanasana, is where we started. Take a couple of back bends here. Feet come underneath the knees, hip distance apart. And feel free to take a supported back bend here if you like. You can slide one of your blocks on any setting. The lowest setting would be very gentle. Allow yourself to experience this beautiful connection of your sacrum into the block and supporting your back. A little bit of an inversion, head below the heart. You can take a second setting as well. If you want to use the block to help you in Satipandasana, a little bridge pose, bring the block between your inner thighs on the smallest setting. Hands beside your hips, right beside your hips, so your feet are tucked in between your hands, close enough to tickle your heels. On your inhale breath, root to the feet and slowly squeeze that block as you peel your hips up off the mat, spine up off the mat. Shoulders squeeze together, interlace your hands, knuckles pressing towards the heels as you lift your chest higher. Keep pressing your knees forward so the thighs are lifting and stretching. If you're in supported bridge, enjoy the breath. Stay here for three more deep breaths. Keep lifting the hips, press your thighs forward. Last inhale, release your hands as you lift a little higher and on your exhale, slowly lower as you squeeze the block down. Release the block, take your feet wide, inner knees touch or a different variation if you like. Place your hands, one over the heart, one over the abdomen, and breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Let's do one more back bend. If Urdhva Dhanurasana is in your practice, you'll set up the same way, except for the palms will press up toward the ceiling, and you'll bring your fingers beside your ears, fingers pointing toward the shoulders. Lift up onto the crown of your head first, and then you'll push all the way up. You can also take supported bridge, again, if you want, maybe on the first or second setting of the block, or Satipanda Samarvasana, little bridge pose, Jivadi lift up. Interlace the hands again, maybe find the opposite grip. If you're going for Urdhva Dhanurasana, Come on to the crown of your head first, widen your hands, and then press up. Try to straighten your arms and legs the best you can. Let the head look back toward your toes if you can. Deep breath in. Take a deep breath out. Try to take two more breaths. Whichever back bend you're in, keep the hips lifting. Squeeze the block if you have it. Lift your chest, try to straighten your limbs if you're in Urdhva Dhanurasana. One more breath. Release your hands if you're in little bridge pose. Lift your hips higher as you inhale. Slowly lower down. Back where we started again. Feet together, knees out wide. Place your hands on your heart and on your abdomen. Remind yourself that you're still here with a deep breath. Feel your heart. One more. And pull your knees together with your hands. Knees into chest. Send your legs up toward the ceiling. Vikarika Karani. You can roll out your ankles. Roll out your wrists. It might be even nice to take your block and put it underneath your sacrum. Feel that extra little bit of lift of the hips and the arms, relaxing. And welcome to stay here. This is a beautiful inversion. If you'd like to take this one step further, you can go for plow pose. Block can stay where it is for now. Lift your hips up over your body. Toes coming to the mat behind you. Support your lower back with your hands. 
Maybe walk your elbows a little bit closer to each other. You can stay or interlace your hands behind your lower back. Knuckles moving away. You might need to move the block out just there. You're welcome to stay right here. Keep your chin in toward your chest. Support your lower back. Maybe lift the legs up. Sarvangasana, shoulder stand. Hips moving toward your face as you inhale. Toes moving away from your head as you exhale. Maybe take a few breaths with one ankle crossed in front of the other and use that little hook of the ankles to pull your legs straighter. Whichever variation you've taken, Vipurita Karani, Plow Pose, or Shoulder Stand, try to take at least five more deep breaths. If you are in shoulder stand and you have one or two breaths left, let yourself come down through plow pose. Use your hands as brakes for plow pose. Slowly lowering down, so take your time. No rush to get down. Take a couple of breaths here, just let your body settle. We'll move into Matsyasana fish pose. Lift up your hips, slide your palms underneath your sacrum, let your elbows squeeze toward each other. Extend your legs straight onto your mat and point your toes down and forward. Press into your elbows, forearms and hands and leverage your chest and head up so much that your head comes off the mat. Tilt your head back and lightly lower onto the crown. Point your toes forward, lift your heart beautiful heart opener to really expose all of this beautiful heart energy. Maybe stay or release your toes forward at 45 degrees. Maybe even lift your head or three. Two more breaths. One more breath. Lower the legs, lower the head, chin to chest. Walk your feet back onto a mat, release your hands from underneath you. Take a breath. Now we'll end here with our favorite supine twist. So about 10 or so breaths on each side. So you're welcome to take the knees together to the right. Maybe you extend your bottom leg straight and your top knee bends. Maybe you twist up your legs, so left foot come over right, maybe even hooking the toes and knees to the right. So you pick. It could even be that the top leg is straight, and you can even bend the bottom knee and reach for the inside edge of your foot with your opposite hand. So wherever you decide to be, let's take 10 deep breaths. Use this opportunity to wring out the last bits of tension and tightness from the spine. Try to gaze away from the right if you can toward the left. Slowly release your twist if you're in a different shape. Press into your hands, bring your hips and knees back through center. Give yourself a nice little squeeze if you need. Knees into the chest. And then set yourself up for the twist on the other side. So in my case, I'm extending my left leg straight. Right leg is coming across. I'm hooking my left hand on the outside of my outer right foot and pushing my right foot down. And then if you like, you can bend that bottom knee and reach for the inside arch of your left foot with your right hand. You might have your knees together, you might have your top knee bent. Maybe you take your gaze in any of the poses over to the right. And deep breath.
Just slowly unwind yourself from your shape. Hands down onto the mat to shift back through center. If there's any last shape or pose that you would like to do, maybe it's hugging the knees into the chest, maybe it's a happy baby again. We'll take a few breaths to settle yourself down. Had a lot of different opening today to our practice, a hip, twisting, balancing, heart opening. When you're ready to settle down, allow your feet to relax and then allow your legs to relax. Allow your arms to open. Maybe cover yourself. Before you go into your final Shavasana, and I'll stay with you for Shavasana so we can have a final own together at the end. Before you go into your final Shavasana, take a deep breath, like a full, full, full body breath. Inhale, sigh out your mouth, let something go, wash it away, and then settle in deeply. As if you could instantly drop into this deep state of relaxation, let yourself go there. Trust yourself to relax. It's okay to let go, even for 75 minutes, and let go of anything that you're holding on to, anything that's causing you tension or stress. You'll be okay. Welcome to stay exactly as you are and take a beautiful long Shavasana. If you would like, you can chant from the shape that you're in or take your time to come up to your seat. I feel there's an urgency right now to send more peace into the world, to let all the people in the world know that we have the potential for peace, peace in our bodies, peace in our minds, peace in our hearts. And with all of this struggle, at the foundation of all of it is love. We can get back to that place through peace. So please join me from any position that you like for the chant, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Chant for peace, peace, peace. Peace for yourself, peace for each other, peace for the whole world. Remind yourself of your intention, personal and collective. Remind yourself of your dedication and let's join together. Deep inhale, full exhale. Inhale for all, big breath. Oh. So much for joining me for this practice this evening. I'll see you tomorrow night at 5:30 for power, and again on Thursday for Hatha, Friday and Sunday night at 7:15 for Yin, and 9:15 a.m. on Saturday for 90-minute power. Namaste.